All right, so this is your page where you'll start when you're in Photoshop. Uh, mine looks a little different than yours. I've got all my recent documents here. I don't recommend trusting your recent documents, especially when you're bouncing from laptop to laptop. I use the same computer every day, so a lot of my recent documents are up here. Um, your recent documents won't be as reliable when you're moving from laptop to laptop. I always recommend uh, keeping an eye over here on create new and open and knowing where your open button is. The open button will be the most reliable way for you to find the things that you've done before. Know where you save things and know how to open from that place that you've saved things to. Uh, use your Google Drive file stream as I explained to you before. Know how to save things there. Know how to open your things from there. If you're not sure how to do that, please ask me. Uh, you're going to get very lost very quickly. Once we get into more advanced Photoshop uh, projects that require multiple days or multiple weeks on the same project in Photoshop, if you don't get uh, reliable and good at saving to the same place every time and making it a place that's a, a good place to save, like Google Drive, um, you're going to have a, a lot of struggles not saving reliably like that. So let's go to Create New. This is where she starts when she does her project. And uh, you're going to see Create New. Here we are. Your Create New will look a little different. Now, you'll see that she's working on a Mac. Many people work on Macs who do Photoshop. Many people work on PCs. And these days, I would say that the difference is not a large difference. Many years ago, people often used Macs for creative and, and graphic arts stuff because they were better. I would say these days, the difference is not a large run of law. It's a matter of preference. Who likes what different types of computers? Uh, PCs are just as capable of doing any kind of graphics art stuff that Macs are. But you'll see that they look different. And so you have to get used to that and not let that throw you off when you're looking at a video of somebody using a different kind of computer than yours uh, that looks different. One of the first things I want to mention is her default was in the new document window to set up her document in pixels. But your, your default over here is in the inches. You can set up a document in whatever uh, style you want to, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. A lot of times you know specific inches that you want your document to be. You want to match uh, a real life picture at certain sizes that you want to create or you want to print it out on eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. You can see here my most recent document was 11 by 17. So I knew I wanted to print it out on 11 by 17 paper, so I made it that size. You can try to match something. Um, or you can go to pixels if you know what size pixels you want it to be. I believe one of these videos I have you watching goes over resolution on some level. I'm going to get into that in a little bit more in depth. I will recommend just on a quick aside here while we're on this screen, never keep a default of 72 pixels per inch. Terrible, terrible, terrible way to work. Always minimum of 150 and uh, 300 is another good number. 150 or 300. 150 is a good default. 300 if you want it to be really, really good. Um, the problem with having 300 is some pictures that you will bring in from the internet will be way too small to work on a 300 pixels per inch project. So keep that in mind. If you're using pictures from the internet, a lot of times 300 in this space will be too, too much and you won't be able to use them. So 150 is a good default to start with in this space here. So I go to create and you'll find you have tabs across the top as you create new documents. When you see what she did, when she created her new document, she did not get tabs. She gets windows that get created. Now, some people like the windows. I find the windows to be cluttered and, and be difficult to deal with. Everybody has their own preferences for how they deal with their own workspace. And I encourage you as you get to work in, in Photoshop, learn what works best for you. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I'll tell you what works well for me. I like the tabs. If I open up more documents here, for example, let's go ahead and open. 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 You'll see I get tabs across the top. And that lets me do is as I focus on one picture, I'm focused on that one document. So I can switch to a different one and be focused on that one then. And I have access to them all across the top. In her document, the default she had set up was for Windows. I can make any of these into a window by simply grabbing the tab and pulling it off. And now I've got it as a window. Grab the tab, pull it off. Windows. And now I can move them around and have them be near each other. I can see them next to each other if I want to. Some people like to work in that kind of environment and see things near each other. If I've done that by accident, 
and I'd rather not have them like this, I want them to go back to tabs, I can simply dock them back up. And now they're back to being tabs again. Photoshop is very flexible and very intuitive in that way. It does what you'd expect it to do. Do you see how my layers and my history bar is over on the left and yours is default to the right? If you wanted to bring yours over that, to that side, you simply grab it and drag it where you want it to be. It does what you'd expect it to do when you move things around. Another thing that she has by default that you do not have, that some people were asking me for, was the rulers. How many of you saw the rulers and you wondered, where do you get those rulers at? Right? Let me show you how to get the rulers if you want them and how to change them to different types of rulers and how to use those rulers real quickly here. If you go to the view options at the top, these are all your different options at the top. You're going to get used to seeing these. The view one at the top here changes how your user interface looks, what, you, what your view looks like. If I click on this, you'll find one of your options is rulers. Lots of other interesting things on here for you to mess around with. Really hard to mess this up. If you think you've messed this up, call me over. I'll fix it for you. This is not something you can really mess up. I encourage you to play around in here. Turn the rulers on. There they are. What's my default? What is it measuring in? Do you think? Inches. Now she was working within in pixels. If you want to work in pixels, you can. All you have to do is right click on the ruler up here and change it to whatever you want to measure in. Switch to pixels. Now I'm measuring in pixels. And you'll see the rulers follow my cursor. Do you see the, the little line moving around? She made guides. Did you see the guides that she made? The blue lines that she pulled down? And she also didn't really describe much how she created those lines, how those were made, or why. Um, now, Photoshop will automatically create temporary guides for you as you work. For example, if I want my text here to line up with something, if I grab it, I start moving it around. Do you see these purple lines that are being created? These purple lines are temporary guides that are being made to tell me I'm lining up with things. Like right now, that one that's vertical is telling me that my text is lining up horizontally centered in my object. I want that sometimes. In this case, I wanted that. So it's letting me know, hey, I'm, I'm lined up centered. And it's letting me do that automatically. So sometimes it will create automatic guides for you temporarily as you work. But they'll go away. If you want to create guides that you can use all the time and reuse, you can do that by pulling off of the rulers. So you, you click on this ruler here, click, drag, and you get a line. <clears throat> now I'm gonna maybe, and you'll notice, I don't know if you can see it, they kind of snap. You see it snapping onto objects in my scene. Snapping to the bottom of my text there, snapping. Well, it's only going to snap to things in the current layer. That's one thing you notice. I'm currently selecting this layer over here. But it's only snapping to things on that layer. If I had my other layer selected, for example, it'll now snap to that text. So let's go ahead and make guides top and bottom, left and right, on my text. There's my text box. And now I can use those guides on other layers then to line other layers up to things on my text. And they'll stay there until I get rid of them. How do I get rid of them? Drag them off. Grab it. Drag it back to the ruler. And now they've disappeared. Question, yes. You did. I don't know what that button is. I can Google it for you and I'll, I'll let you know later. I don't know what that button is. I don't use those guides very much. I find that the automatic guides that I showed you are enough for me most of the time to line the things up that I need. I very rarely use these guides, but I do find that some people really like them and use them all the time. So I will find out what that option is to do it. You'll find that there are dozens and dozens and dozens of keyboard combinations in Photoshop to do lots of different things. I don't use many of them because that's not something I use very often, but I can find them for you if it's something that you want. So I'll look into that for you. All right, so that is real quickly how to get started in Photoshop and briefly how this looks different than perhaps what you're seeing on the screen. If you have other questions, please let me know.